Welcome to Over It and On With It. I'm your host, Christine Hassler, and for over a decade, I've been a life coach, speaker, and author. Each week, you'll hear me work directly with a caller as I coach them through a goal they want to accomplish or an obstacle they may be facing. I'll provide a blend of practical and spiritual advice as well as tangible actions you can apply to your own life. Now, let's get on with the episode. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I'm so happy to have you here. And this is a great call for all you doers out there. And I think that pretty much means everybody. I mean, we just live in a time when being busy is like a badge of honor. And even though we want to just be, you know, we want peace of mind, we want to relax, we want to be present, we just tend to do, 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 and define ourselves by what we do. And when we define ourselves by what we do, when some kind of doing activity, such as a job, goes away, we often find ourselves with a big old expectation hangover. What is an expectation hangover? Well, a lot of you probably know that have been with me a while, but if you don't, it's disappointment. It's when one of three things happen. Either something doesn't turn out like we planned, or something does turn out like we planned. We, we get the result that we went for, but we don't have the feeling that we thought it would give us, or life just throws us an unexpected curveball. And in this week's call, Lisa, who I'll be coaching, is dealing with an expectation hangover around not having a job. And as you see, when we'll go through this call, this actually is presenting her with a huge window of opportunity to just be. So as you listen to this call, I want you to to consider a few things. Can you relate to being busy, 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 busy all the time? Do you often use busyness as a distraction? So much so that If you really stop and think about who you are, independent of any roles you play in life, job descriptions, things you do, how would you answer that question? Do you panic during times when you aren't busy, when you feel like you aren't doing enough? Would you say you have a very busy life, but not a very full life in terms of being fulfilled? And consider this, is accepting not enabling but loving support just so you can be and take care of yourself, especially financial support from spouse or family member, is that challenging? Is it challenging just to receive support? And when you're in an expectation hangover, are you paying enough attention to all the things that are going right? Oftentimes when we're in something like a job loss, for example, we look at all the things that are not in our life instead of paying attention to how it could be a blessing and all the things that actually are going our way. So like I said in the beginning, we live in a world that rewards being busy, but many times it's a distraction. It's a distraction from the deeper longings of our spirit, of our heart, of our soul. And sometimes it takes an expectation hangover to do something for ourselves we wouldn't normally do or pay attention to, something we may be ignoring. Sometimes an expectation hangover comes along to give ourselves a break from all the pressure we're putting on ourselves. So how about not waiting for an expectation hangover to come along before giving yourself a break? So consider this and all the questions I asked before as you listen to my session with Lisa. Hello, Lisa. Welcome to the show. How can I help you? Hi, Christine. Well, um, I had found, um, I guess, your program talking about expectation hangover, and it just kind of resonated with me. Um, I've had a great year, a big year, but uh, I'm experiencing, I guess, some of those symptoms of expectation hangover. Um, I went back to school and got my MBA, a really awesome MBA program, and graduated in May. I got married in June um, and have recently been on the job hunt. Um, my husband was transferred to another city, and so I'm kind of limited to that city. And I've been looking there, and it's just been really challenging to connect with people, to you know, get people to look at, even just look at my resume, you know. And and the job hunt now feels so impersonal; you can barely reach out to anybody. So um, I'm just having a lot of, you know, dealing with the disappointment and um, uh, you know the the rejection, which is definitely part of the job hunt process and I understand that but I'm just wondering if if maybe I've picked the wrong career if I'm looking at doing the wrong places or just kind of how to deal with this new phase in my life where things are 
are slowing down a little bit and I'm just not quite getting where I want to be. Okay. Well, and how many ways in your life are where, are where you want to be? Like where in your life are you maybe not seeing that you're exactly where you want to be? So can you talk about some of the things that are amazing in your life right now? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. My my husband and my family and I mean, my friends, our, our wedding was so special just because we got so much love from all the people around us. And that was really an amazing time to receive all of that love. Um, you know, and as far as my, my experiences up till now, I'm, I'm satisfied with them. And, and, you know, there are a lot of things going really well. Um, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with the slowdown. I'm dealing with being more, spending more time at home. You know, the, mm-hmm. the time I spent during my MBA was so hectic and so busy, and now it's just such a change. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Have you ever thought that on some level, your like higher self, your soul, whatever you want to call it, your unconscious, any of those things, may in a way be creating this because you're really, really tired, and a lull or a slowdown or time to maybe do some of the things you couldn't do when you were so busy or maybe deal with the, some of the things that you haven't dealt with because keeping yourself busy may have been a distraction is this is the reason why this kind of is happening and it has really nothing to do with applying for the wrong jobs? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, that could definitely be a possibility. Um, you know, I'm, I've been a person my whole life that you know, I get a certain amount of satisfaction out of out of being productive and, and staying busy. And um, right. it's definitely been a rearrangement for me to have this, this slowdown. Right. So having that kind of fulfillment, satisfaction, or even identification with being busy is a great way to age prematurely. Do you want that? No. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. So for whatever reason, you've kind of operated as a busy person. And I often say a busy life is not a full life. You know, just because we're busy doesn't mean we're necessarily fulfilled. So you mentioned expectation hangover. And I I empathize with the fact that you're having one. And I'm excited for you too, just like I am for anyone who has an expectation hangover, because it's an amazing opportunity to learn something really huge. So if you were to ask the question, and just pause and think about it for a moment, if you're to ask yourself the question, what am I learning from this particular expectation hangover? What am I learning? What comes forward for you? I guess part of it is sometimes I, I rely on myself too much. You know, I, I'm very self-reliant. And so there's certain situations where I think, you know, I, I can I can do this by myself, you know. But as far as the, you know, the job hunt, I'm really learning to reach out to people and really try to utilize my network and and realize that, you know, there are a lot of things that I, I can do on my own, but there's so many things that, that I count on other people for and that other people count on me for. And it's sort of waking me up to realize that, you know, I don't have to try to, to handle so many things on my own that I can say, hey, I need help with this. That's beautiful. That's a huge awareness. And let's take that a step further. How much in your life are you really feeding your soul? How much in your life are you surrounding yourself with friends, not just your husband, but girlfriends and like-minded people and, and your soul family? How much of, of kind of soul feeding do you have going on in your life? Well, I've had, it's been hard because when I graduated, you know, my, my amazing friends that I made, um, during my program, you know, just scattered about the country and we all stay in touch and I've actually visited with one of them already, but, you know, I went, I was, I was in school in a different city and I came back to the city where my husband is and now we're going to another city. And so, you know, there's, there's a certain amount of amazing people around me, but there's just a lot of uncertainties underneath it. Um, and so I haven't, you know, been able to maybe connect as much with other people as I'd like to, Mm -hmm. um, I have been going to a Buddhist center recently, like in the past six months. Great. Um, And that's been absolutely incredible. And that's a lot of what has sustained me through this period because it gives such a bigger perspective. And that's Mm -hmm. like, it's part of why what you talk about resonated with me so well, just because a lot of the things that you mentioned are things that come up in Buddhism and, and, Mm -hmm. you know, 
Mm -hmm. I felt that connection, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Mm -hmm. to a certain degree, it's it's there. Maybe not to the degree I'd like it to be just because I'm in a city where I don't have as many close friends. I don't have any family here. And you're moving again soon? Is that what you said? Yeah. 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 And when are you moving? At the end of the month. At the end of the month. And you know where you're moving to, obviously. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Do you have to work right now? I, I haven't had to. I had enough savings to not do it for the past couple months, but it's really getting down to where I, I need a source of income. <laughs> okay, so your husband can't yeah. support you? I mean, he can, but it just, with with our situation right now, it, it can't last for this long, you know, and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm at the point where I, I don't, I feel like I've had a, a good break and I really would like to get back into it. And I, you know, I, I kind of trained for the past two years to really be able to, to have a, a career, but it's just not materializing at the moment. And, and, and the thing is, is, I've had final round job interviews in other cities, but in the end, the offer from my husband was enough to, to close this other city. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, I know it's not a complete, you know, Law search, but I'm just having a lot of trouble in this new city, and I don't, I don't know people down there, and I'm trying to reach out to anybody that has connections there. But mm-hmm. you know, I understand maybe you know my soul or the universe has put me in this place right now, but I really am ready, right, to, to use a lot of the things I've been doing the past two years and put it into practice. Right, I hear you. I hear you. Well, kind of what it sounds like though is a little bit of putting the cart before the horse. You know, you're about to move at the end of the month which is, you know, two, three weeks away, Um, you're going through this transition and you're also sort of realizing, oh my gosh, my whole identity and fulfillment has been external. It's been by staying busy. So just as an offer, as a consideration, what if you said to yourself, because here's the thing, it's sort of like you have competing intentions. There's a part of you inside I'm feeling that just wants to be fulfilled in the now, that wants to just know that, that sense of satisfaction doesn't have to come from anything outside of you. And then there's, there's this other part that really wants a job in this new city. And they're sort of canceling each other out and you're not fully stepping into either. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what I would encourage you to do is to tell yourself, to make an agreement with yourself, to be like, you know what, Lisa, until I move, until I'm in the next new city, I'm going to put the job search on hold. I'm open and available if things come in or if people want to introduce me or if things kind of fall in my lap, but I'm going to stop hustling. I'm going to stop actively seeking and looking and searching and just really go within and just really nourish my soul and maybe do some things creatively that I've wanted to do. Maybe read a book that I've wanted to read and really give yourself full permission because I hear you and that you've had time off or whatever, but I don't think you've given yourself full permission to just relax and just let go of any need to find or create or produce anything sort of on the goal line. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So what if what you're learning right now and and since you, you know, go to Buddhism services, this will make a lot of sense. What if what you're learning right now is really just to be and not do? To really experience yourself as a human being and not a human doing and to let go of the mm-hmm. addiction to certainty and to knowing. And could you approach this move not knowing where you're going to work exactly, not knowing who you're going to meet, but really knowing that you've gifted yourself with this time to stop doing, 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 doing. And it's a short amount of time we're talking about. It's a short amount of time. But this two, three weeks of giving yourself full permission to stop doing and looking for anything on the outside could be extremely pivotal for you when it comes to your relationship with yourself and also your relationship to uncertainty. Mm -hmm. How does that sound? I mean, it sounds maybe like like what I need to do (laughs) because, you know, I have had this time off, but I never, I certainly didn't give it to myself just because I felt like, I had to use it to, to get a job, you know, and every day I would be on there searching for a job, you know? So, right. and it, you know, if I was doing something else, I almost felt guilty because I, you know, I should be looking for a job. <laughs> right. 
Right. So you sort of like you have your worthiness attached to either having or looking for a job. And and that is not where your worth comes from. And I'm sure you've heard about how like when somebody's like so desperate for a relationship and looking all around and all around, they keep getting rejected. They don't find it like it's just it's just exhausting for them. But then when they stop looking, they give it up. They accept (laughs) themselves. They meet somebody at the grocery store. You've heard that story, right? Absolutely. Right. So, I mean, and, and like, let's talk about your husband. Did you meet him because you were like so actively looking and thought your identity depended on finding him? Definitely not. <laughs> no? How did you meet him? How did he come into your uh, life? Yeah, I mean, I, it was a long time ago and uh, I was working at a restaurant just out of college and he knew somebody I knew and got introduced and started talking. And, you know, just, I was I was certainly not looking for a relationship at that time. You were just being you. Yep. So imagine you could find a job the same way. That it doesn't have to be this hunt. That just by being you, you're naturally going to attract the kind of jobs that are right for you. And also you'll approach the job search in a different way. Mm -hmm. So I know this may sound like interesting advice. Um, However, I'm really feeling like what you're learning from your expectation hangover is to break up with the identification that you are what you do because you're so much more than that. And I have a feeling there's a deeper connection to your spiritual path that wants to come forward. There's some creative things that want to be expressed through you. And there's sort of like this little one inside of you who just wants to take a deep breath. Like she just wants summer vacation and she just wants to just play and do what she wants to do and not feel so much pressure. And so could you, could you give yourself that? Could you give yourself that at least till the end of the month with no guilt? Yeah, I think I can. <laughs> yeah. And what's the emotion that comes up around that for you? Um, I mean, it's a sense of relief, you know, mm-hmm. but also just a little bit of fear around, you know, I guess stagnation, which would only come about if, you know, if I allowed it to. Well, and and it depends on how we're looking at stagnation, right? Because there's like the physical world reality goal line of our life, right? But would you also say that you're growing and evolving as a human being? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And isn't that kind of momentum just as important as what we achieve on the goal line? I mean, probably more. (laughs) Exactly. So this is not stagnation. This is a redirecting. You're just pressing pause on the goal line. Just pause, not stop. Just pause. Just pause. And you're reorienting to the soul line and you're creating movement there. So there's Mm -hmm. no stagnation at all. And I have found when I really move on the soul line, when I go back and look at the goal line, it's naturally moved along as well. Right. So this is not you just checking out and going to Cabo and drinking margaritas and, you know, that that's more of resignation and checking out. And that would cause stagnation. <laughs> this is about you pressing just pause on the goal line and really looking within and doing mm-hmm. the things that nourish your soul. And, and as you can feel from the tears that are coming up, Lisa, this is you want this. There's a part of you that's really tired of pushing and working so hard. There's a part of you that wants to just be loved for who you are, not what you do. And it's really important you honor that part. Yeah, (laughs) definitely. And, And in so many ways, that's how this expectation hangover is serving you. You're not being given another job to be distracted by. Your job right now, your full time job is really loving yourself. So I hope all you busy bee doer overachievers out there can take a big sigh of relief. Actually, let's just do that together. A nice deep sigh. (sighs) You know, letting all that pressure go. All that pressure to make something happen. And really give yourself permission. Give yourself permission to stop chasing results and checklists and doing As you heard in my session with Lisa, there was such a part of her that wanted a break, that wanted to stop and relax and receive. 
and listen deeply to what her heart wanted. You know, we get rewarded for the goal line, you know, the external, the job, the money, the accomplishments, things we can tangibly measure or see. Spend some time on the soul line instead. Consider it an upgrade. You know, if you really need something to do, get expectation hangover and work through it. There's so many exercises and guided meditations that'll totally help you move along on the soul line, which in result helps us move along the goal line as well. And that was part of my coaching to Lisa. You know, it was hard for her to really attract the job opportunity, the right people to meet, all those things, because she was in, she was coming from such a place of lack. She was coming from such a place of panic, such a place of, I have to have this. You know, and when we're such actively searching and seeking with that kind of attachment, like I must have this, it just kind of perpetuates the misunderstanding that something's missing, which is why I coached her to really just savor this as a blessing in her life and actually receive support, really receive support. I asked Lisa about if her husband could help her. Now I'm all for Lisa finding a job and contributing if that's what she wants to do. But I actually also had a sense that she might be a better wife if she stops stressing so much right now and just gives herself this window of time. Internal work is often undervalued, but it's the most powerful And when we don't do the internal work, we sort of are delaying the progress of our soul and really delaying in a lot of ways, from my point of view, our destiny. So some assignments for you is, especially if you're someone who is not so great at asking for help or support, (laughs) ask someone for some of it. Make a request. Stop doing everything on your own. A lot of times we assume that the people in our lives won't want to help us, but they do. They want us to be happy. Some other takeaways are to take some quiet time, even if it's just a few minutes in the morning. And I know that's uncomfortable for doer, doer, doers. I get that. I used to be one of those. I call myself a recovering overachiever. Let yourself feel the discomfort and the not doing. Eventually it'll get more comfortable. Even if you set your phone for a minute timer. And just sit and listen to your breath and just be. And then maybe the next week, two minutes and the next week, three. And before you know it, you'll be up to 20 minutes and you'll relish in the quote unquote not doing. And another assignment I gave Lisa, which really works for so many people that I coach, is to make an agreement with ourselves in in terms of timing. A lot of times, especially if we're giving ourselves permission to not do as much, the ego freaks out and is like, it's all going to fall apart. How am I going to make stuff happen? Like if I stop doing things, I'm just going to end up like vegging out and I'll never be able to get my mojo on again. Okay, that's not true. You will. In fact, you'll be more replenished and probably even more proactive. But that mind, that part of you that's freaking out, just give yourself a timeline. Say, okay, for like, A week, I'm not going to actively look for a job or look for a relationship or look for something. And I'm just going to be. So that's my encouragement for you this week is to get over overdoing and get on with being. And I also want to thank Lisa for being willing to share so courageously and honestly on the show. And remember, you can book a session to be coached on air at christinehassler.com slash podcast. That's also the place you can leave your comments and questions. I love connecting with you there. And please share this show with anyone you think it could serve and subscribe on iTunes. Until next week, here's to getting over it and on with it. Thank you for listening to Over It and On With It. I love hearing from you, so please post your comments or questions at christinehasler.com slash podcast. That's also the place you can sign up to receive coaching from me in an upcoming episode. And if you love this show, please share it and subscribe on iTunes. You can find all my social media handles and sign up to be part of my community at christinehasler.com. Until next week, here's to getting over it and on with it. Much love and many blessings.